Hello, I'm Tom and I'm an illustrator and artist. I'm Dom, I'm a research scientist and programmer and our game is called Silt. So Silt is a dark underwater exploration game. Uh, the visual style is all Tom's, it's hand-drawn. Uh, the assets will sort of start as pen and ink um, and we bring them into the computer and we try to breathe some life into them. For a long time I've been very uh, scared of of the deep sea and um, it's just like something that I would never want to put myself in the situation that our main character, the diver, is in. Um, and a, a big theme in a lot of my other work is, is, uh, is kind of playing on my fears and kind of making them into, into surreal environments and characters and whatnot. So this is basically like an animated version of everything that I've done in the, in the past. I was in research science for eight years uh, and in kind of in the background I did a lot of programming at work and in the background I was learning how to make games and I always wanted to make a game but I, I've never been much of an artist. So I was a programmer looking for an artist and I ran into Tom one day and we started talking. Yeah and I, I've uh, always wanted to, um, I've always wanted to have my characters animated um, and the games industry seemed like a perfect way to do that and uh, yeah. Bumping the Dom was the, the perfect opportunity, really, to actually make a game. So you'll start in Silt in a fairly safe environment. You'll be reasonably close to the surface, and the creatures there will be pleasant, shoaling fish. Uh, there'll be lots of sunlight. But very, very quickly, you're going to start progressing downwards and downwards and downwards. And the further down you get, the less pleasant the animals will be. So, in my background, I was a research scientist. I studied animal behavior, particularly like uh, social insects like bees, and I built a lot of kind of models and simulations of these kinds of behavior. So I'm trying to bring that into the game as a way of creating a kind of believable backdrop and a believable environment. So the fish in the game will dynamically shoal together. They have system-driven AI that will have them preying on each other, chasing prey around, trying to find food, and if it turns out that they might want to eat the player, then they'll come and eat the player. They might be afraid of you. Uh, there's plants that will come and kill you. There's giant goliath beasts. The world will be kind of teeming with this kind of life, and all of these, life, all of these creatures are designed through your mm. messed up imagination. <laughs> um. There's also going to be hints of a kind of lost society or something, or lost civilization, that type of thing will be hinted at. Uh, so there will be a narrative thread to the, to the game. Um, I'm mainly influenced by um, Edward Gorey and uh, Tim Burton. Um, any surrealist really is, or has always been really inspiring to me. Anything dark, weird, not mainstream is always what's influenced my work. For my part, a lot of my influence has come from my work in science. So, as I've spoken about, like the animal behavior, the shoaling, the kind of the ways that animals interact with one another. So, in silt, the world is there whether the player is there or not, right? Like, it doesn't care that much that the diver exists. And so, what we want is for the player to sort of stumble across a living, breathing uh, ecology. A lot of the puzzles and uh, progression in Silt will involve the player having to kind of watch the behavior of these animals, interact with it, maybe obstruct it, and then later on in the game you'll be able to actually directly sort of charm, possess, and take control of some of these animals and use their special abilities to make your way forward through the game. So when we first met, we were living in different cities and we worked on this game remotely. So a lot of the conversations, a lot of the back and forth was just happening via Discord and other text chat stuff. So we were looking for an opportunity to work together, get in the same room. So either that was money to, to rent a studio and then you saw this Stugan uh, mm. application and we saw that it was seven weeks in a beautiful cottage in the woods uh, where we could work together and, and that's why we applied. 
it, it's been great uh, to be able to actually kind of uh, bat ideas off each other a lot quicker, be able to to just experiment a lot more and be able to like progress the game um, exponentially compared to compared to what we had back home. Yeah, so all, all these little problems that would have been, you know, two hours of back and forth on text, yeah. now we can just run down the hor corridor and like fix it and then get back to work. It's, it's been really great. Mm -hmm. Our plan um, for after Stugan is to hopefully, whilst we're here, create a demo and then afterwards we're going to be um, pitching it to any and every publisher that could be interested to potentially get funding uh, so that we can then uh, start working on the full game. So the demo we'll create at Stugan is essentially like a feature complete test bed. So we will have like at least one of everything that we want to have in the game. So one of the giant goliath creatures uh, will bring in the dynamic lighting and the ability to take control of fish that are light to, to light your way around we'll have um, of course all of the ai and the shoaling behaviors and the basic kind of puzzles some of the puzzles that the player will have to solve to progress through the game so if you're interested in learning more about the game uh, you can find our website at www.siltgame.com or you can follow us on twitter at game circus so thanks for watching. Thank you.